It is difficult to trace children's literature to its origins, but children's literature has a long and fascinating history that stretches back at least as far as ancient Greece and Aesop's fables. Aesop's fables, like the tortoise and the hare, are still with us today, and every generation adapts older stories and adds new ones to the ever-growing library of children's literature. In fact, children's literature has leapt off the pages into toys, cartoons, movies, and the internet. In many ways, children's literature is much like any other type of literature. It comes in poems, stories, novels, and plays. It uses characters, plots, settings, symbols, and themes to convey meanings. It makes statements about education, manners, politics, ethics, religion, and other social issues. And yes, sometimes it causes controversy. In recent years, books like Heather Has Two Mommies by Leslie Neiman, The Lorax by Dr. Seuss, and the Harry Potter books by J.K. Rowling have all initiated heated debates about what messages these books communicate and whether or not they're appropriate reading material for children. Adult concerns and controversies find their way into children's books. Of course, some children's literature was never intended specifically for children in the first place and much of the writing that was originally intended for adults has been adapted, abbreviated, altered, and censored for children. At the same time, adults seem as fascinated as younger audiences, with many of the texts that were written for children. Moreover, many forms and genres that we have come to think of as being for children now include adult content. Not every comic book or cartoon, for instance, is suitable for children. The question then of what children's literature is and where it comes from is not easy to answer. We do know that the concept of childhood has evolved over time and a rise in production of materials for children parallels rather the rise of capitalism, technology like the printing press, and the study of psychology. It is clear that the best children's literature passes from generation to generation as adults share stories they loved as children with the next generation. The best children's literature appeals to both children and adults. J.K. Rowling wouldn't be the richest woman in England if only children read Harry Potter. We are starting our study of children's literature with fairy tales. But before we dive into the world of fairies, ogres, and wicked stepmothers, take a few minutes to read the introduction in your textbook on pages 1 and 2. After that, read Professor Holsey's lecture on the basic principles of reading fiction, then complete the assessment for this unit.